So the deadline for your paper is really coming up and you'll know we're near finished with your research paper. Or maybe you've started, but you know, you just want to get it done as soon as possible, but publish it at the same time in a really good Scopus Index journal. Well, how do you do that? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can literally write your paper in a weekend following this research paper blueprint that I'm going to share with you and show you right now. So let's dive right in. Now, before, before I show you this exact blueprint for writing a research paper that will allow you to write your next paper in as little as a weekend, what I want to emphasize is that this blueprint is going to work for any field. It doesn't matter whether you're, you know, you're doing history, archaeology, quantum physics, chemistry, environmental sciences, or God knows what else you're studying. If you're doing an experimental paper, then this blueprint is going to work really, really well, regardless of the discipline. And I'm also going to show you how you can customize it to the specific journal or the conventions of your discipline. This blueprint really has been tried and tested with hundreds of PhD students and researchers that we've worked with very closely at Academic English Now, helping them publish papers. And it's gotten them amazing results. So if you follow this template, trust me, it's proven it's going to work for you and it's going to help you write your research paper in a weekend as long as you can focus and actually do the work because it's not a magic pill that i'm going to give you and tomorrow you're going to wake up with a paper you have to do the work but if you're prepared to do the work i'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to write your paper really really fast and publish it in a really good journal before you actually start with with this template um, here that you can that you can see on the screen. Uh, what I want you to to do first of all is to check the length of the paper in the specific journal where you're submitting to. So you should have at least one chosen journal. I'd recommend you have one, two, and three. So you have option A, B, and C in case option A doesn't work and it's rejected. And really, you want to look at the length of the paper in that journal because. Experimental papers in different fields can differ tremendously in length. I've seen papers published in medicine, for example, that are like 6,000 words. I've seen papers published in education that are over 10,000 words. So it, it, it can really vary. So I want you to do basically is to get five papers from that specific journals, if you, if you know that specific journal, and uh, and uh, or from your field in general, especially five papers that you've referred to in your own work. and. Put the length here with, without references and you can also add with references to have that comparison depending on what the journal wants. And then, you know, calculate the average. What is it on average? Is it 6,000 words on average, 8,000, 9,000, so that you have a ballpark figure and before you start writing, you know, you know where you're going. Because one of the biggest problems, you know, that I, that I see is that people write too much and then they have to cut a lot from the paper, which can become really, really difficult. So that's the, that's the first um, thing. And then the second thing that you want to do is consider the length of, of each section of the paper and adjust the length that is suggested in here. Um, as per the, the five papers. So again, you want to be looking at the five papers, look at the introduction, of that paper, um, how long is the is the introduction? Is it 500 to 1,000 1, words? Is it more like 500 or is it more like a thousand words? And you want to adjust it here um, on the template as well. Now, um, the next thing that you can do is as you're going through the, through the template is you wanna look at the main sections of the papers in your field, so the five papers that you found and identify sort of what main sections do they have because some research papers will have a separate literature review section other papers will not have a separate literature review section they'll have just have introduction and then straight into methodology some papers will have results and discussion combined others will have discussion and conclusion combined others will have all three sections separate so it just kind of depends on the on the journal it doesn't really affect so much how each of these sections is written but nevertheless it's important to get that right at the start so you know as you're going through the five papers that you found, you can start adjusting this structure that you see on the screen. For example, if the papers in your field don't have a separate literature review section, well then you can just delete this uh, from the blueprint, right? As simple as that. And then the last thing really is as you're going through the template, you want to compare the individual elements of each section 
and two, what do you actually see in papers in the journal where you want to publish, right? So, you know, typically the introduction will start with an importance of the topic, uh, but maybe in your papers that you're reading, it's slightly different. Is there, you know, a brief literature review um, or not, right? And then you want to be looking at those, um, at those things, really. So uh, once you've done this kind of initial adjusting to your field and um, the journal the way you want to publish, that you know shouldn't take more than an hour, maximum an hour and a half. Don't spend a whole day on it uh, because we want to finish your paper in a weekend, right? So you've got this personalized to your own um, situation, to the paper, the journal that you want to submit. So now what, what you need to do is, you know, basically just get started putting in your ideas into this template and you know what, what i've done here is basically chunk down the seemingly you know insurmountable task of writing a research paper into small tasks each of which can be completed fairly quickly in 15 minutes half an hour one hour okay so i've basically broken down the whole paper for you and the only thing that you need to do is to add your ideas and i believe that you have great research ideas and you know what your paper is about what you're missing really is the structure of the paper to make a coherent story and this is what it what it really gives you right um, so you're going to start with the importance of the of the topic right um, what you want to do here in my notes and ideas is to start writing that paragraph. What, what is the importance of the topic? Typically a paper starts with defining the key term uh, or the topic and why that topic is important. It can be important for the society in general, it can be important for your discipline. So very often papers start in a way such as, you know, for example, Alzheimer's disease, which can be defined as X, Y, and Z. Um, has been on the rise in the Western world or whatever, right? So it's like straight away you talk about the importance of the topic and then you develop that into a paragraph. And typically, you know, this will be just like one paragraph, the importance of the topic. And you want to move to, to the literature review. So basically, you know, you want to be situating your study in, in the context of, of, your, of your field. And you want to be going from general to specific. So if we continue with the example of Alzheimer's disease, you know, what, what about this disease has been studied so far, but you want to be leading us to your topic, right? So you, you won't be able to say everything about that topic because that, that's not the point at all. And I think that's, that's the mistake that a lot of people make. They want to say too much, but in here you want to have two, maximum three paragraphs in some introductions that are very short, just one paragraph where, you know, you briefly outline what the literature says about that particular topic, going from general to specific and leading us all the time to your topic, okay? And the, the, this situating of your topic within the context leads us first to the research gap. And this is crucial. I can't emphasize how important this is. You know, papers get rejected all the time because of this reason you know, the, the research gap. So it really needs to be highlighted very well in your study. I've got other videos on this channel where I talk about, you know, exactly what a research gap is, but what you wanna be doing here is really providing justification for your study. Is there a lack of research? You know, is, is there some controversy or lack of understanding in your field? Are previous studies limited? Is there a big practical problem that needs resolving? Like well, what is going on Why you're doing your study? Why? your aim why this specific research question you've got to answer that in one paragraph usually in the introduction and then you state your research aim and that's about it that's your introduction done so if you just follow it and if you were writing along as i was speaking then you should have your introduction pretty much ready then the literature review now the literature review is optional maybe in your field you don't have it if not you can just skip it and move on to methodology and skip this video forward but if you do have the literature review you know you basically want to spend you know around a thousand words on that literature review and again like with the literature review in the introduction what you're doing is situating your study in the context of your field what you'll be doing here is basically developing the same you know, two, three, maximum four themes um, that you mentioned in the literature review of um, your introduction. And you will develop them more from general to specific, or you can also organize it by um, discipline. 
um, if you have sort of different discipline um, or you can also organize it by topics kind of depends on what you're what you're doing but the key thing is that you know you're you're talking about the key themes from the from the literature and that have already been mentioned in the introduction you're just expanding them a little bit more and you want to provide a critical analysis that again kind of reinforces your research gap so again with that literature review like in the introduction you're going towards the research gap and your aim. That's the whole purpose of the literature review. And if you want more tips on how to do the literature review, how to write it, I've got other videos um, on this channel. And then, you know, you're halfway through your paper, basically, and we're moving into the methodology. The structure of the methodology is pretty simple. Um, and, you know, really what, what you're gonna, in, in any field, what you're gonna start with is your sample and the sampling. Um, techniques. So basically you want to be talking about who or what you studied. You know, if you studied um, material objects, then you want to be talking about how you obtained those objects, you know, where you got those proteins from, how they were produced, how much of it and, and that kind of thing. If you've got human subjects, you want to be talking about, you know, how many people, how did you recruit those subjects and so on. You know, basically what or who you studied. And typically, you know, this can take one, maybe two paragraphs. And then you also want to talk about research tools and procedures. So um, very often in exact sciences, methodology is called materials and methods. So materials are basically, you know, your sample, what you studied, and then the methods are kind of what, what you did to that thing that you studied, what, what you subjected it to, what were the procedures, right? And what research tools that you used. If you're in more like social sciences, maybe you've used interviews, maybe you've used questionnaires, um, field notes, th these are all types of research tools. And I've got another video where I talk in more depth about um, how to write this section specifically. And then you're gonna be talking about data analysis techniques. So basically how you got your data, be it qualitative or quantitative data, how did you analyze that data? Okay, what, what techniques did you apply to analyze it? What statistical tools, for example, what qualitative tools did you apply to analyze that data? And that's it. Depending on the field, you know, it can be as short as 400 words um, or as long as 1000 words. It really depends. But we're shooting for usually around 10% of your total paper. And then really you're moving to results and discussions. Sometimes results and discussion are one section that's for you to check with the journal that you're writing for. But really, you know, you're gonna be dividing the results into the main themes, okay, that you've got. Or if you have more than one aim or more than one research question, then a very easy way to organize results is to, you know, is to have the first part of, of the results section will be about research question one, then research question two, and then research question three. And then within those sections, you will have the main kind of themes and topics that come up from your data analysis. So that's, that's basically in a nutshell how you um, do the results. And of course, you know, you want to provide some sort of visual representation of your data, be it qualitative or quantitative data. For the um, um, latter, you would use you know, figures, tables and stuff like this. And for the former, you've, you've got to give us quotes from uh, participants. And then discussion. Discussion of your results, again, is pretty simple and it, I found that it follows a very repeatable pattern. So usually what you do is first you restate the result that you want to discuss, then you compare that result to the literature. So is it similar or different from previous studies? And then if it's different, you might want to explain um, that uh, result. If the result is similar but is kind of interesting in, in some other way, then you want to provide an explanation for why right and then you want to interpret your findings um, as well right so it's the result that you're discussing in like one sentence and then comparison to the literature similarities and differences maybe like two or three sentences and then explanation and interpretation again you know maybe one or two sentences right but the in the discussion the most important thing is that you talk about what your results actually mean you've presented your results we've got the facts but what does this mean you know ask yourself the question so what you know you've got the results okay 50 percent of people said this but so what well what does this actually tell us okay that's your purpose in the discussion and then we're moving to the conclusion section in some fields like medicine, for example, discussion and conclusion will be one section as well, but that's for you to, to check really. And um, what do we typically do in a, in a conclusion? You restate the main topic, 
right? And the aim of your paper in like one sentence, maybe. And then, you know, in like two, three sentences, you wanna recap again on, on your key findings, but your purpose really is to highlight the uniqueness of your study and highlight the most important findings. Because, you know, the reader has already read your findings, they've read your discussion, but they wanna know what is the conclusion? What are the most important, impactful findings? Um, and then you talk about the practical implications of the findings, if this is appropriate. This might not be appropriate for every single study, but if it is, you definitely wanna think, you know, how can your results be actually used in practice by different uh, stakeholders? And then finally, you know, you also want to acknowledge the limitations. This is really important because it kind of steals ammunition from the reviewers. So you just want to be open and honest about the limitations in your own study. And you want to do it probably in one paragraph. And also, if appropriate, defend your approach or explain what you did, what you did right? Uh, so that's really important. And then finish off on something positive, which is often suggestions for future research. So bearing in mind your findings or bearing in mind the limitations of your study, what should other researchers do? That's the template that you can follow and customize. And if you follow it, you'll be able to finish your paper in as little as a weekend. But if you're still struggling and you want our personalized help, if you want mentorship, if you want us to give you feedback on your paper to ensure that it's good to go and ensure that the reviewers will not reject it, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation with our expert advisors. The link to do that is right below this video. We'll analyze your current situation, your challenges, your goals, and we'll propose an action plan that will help you to publish papers in Scopus Index Journals.